I uh, hope you enjoyed those tank facts. They were a lot of fun to put together. Mm -hmm. We have one final match tonight for the finals of the Rumble in the West North American Qualifiers. I'm Joshua Gray, joined by Randall Holcomb, because who else could commentate tanks in an hour like this on a Friday night? Nobody. I mean, I got, I got a call. I got a call yeah. to do a TV show today. Yeah. I said no. I'm I'm hosting tanks. Can't make it. You know what I'd be doing today. If I weren't commentating tanks. <laughs> Playing tanks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, probably me too. Actually, if I wasn't commentating, I'd probably just go back and play. Yeah. Oh, well, man. They need us here, Randall. I know, yeah. They, yeah. We need to deliver the world the best of the best when it comes to World of Tank action mm -hmm. in this part of the hemisphere. Yeah. It gets, someone's got to do it. That's right. It's tough job. <laughs> Make sure to follow us on Twitter at WGLNA, Facebook.com slash WGLNA, and use that hashtag WGLNA so we can find your tweets and put them up on the broadcast. Shout out to our production team who's been putting together the replays. If you want to watch some of these VODs, in case you missed some of the matches, make sure to check out uh, our highlights on our Twitch page or also on our YouTube page, YouTube, YouTube.com slash WGLNA, where you can see some of our segments there as well, like the Tiger to tank facts. Bernal Empires versus the Cunninghams. I'm going to throw this one out there. Did not expect this. Um, <laughs> Bernal Empires because of, yes, they, they were the favorite compared to Timed Out because okay. of Timed Out being a, a new team. But mm -hmm. Cunningham's defeating Sim. That one is the Did big surprise this. one. Did not expect yeah. this. I, wa I wish we could check what the point spread is, what the odd spread is. For all the teams here. Uh, maybe we'll find out. But I want to take a look at the last time these guys played. Simp and Bernal Empires did play in the group stages. Bernal Empires actually beat Simp. They beat them in the group stages. They've also beaten the Cunninghams. So, Bernal Empires, based on this tournament, based on the way they're performing right now, look stronger. Now, after watching Simp versus Cunninghams, I'm feeling like Cunninghams might be getting themselves into a hot streak. Maybe mm -hmm. you'll agree. I don't know. But... This is uh, I'm I'm giving my advantage to Bernal Empires to start this. You're giving I'm, to I'm Bernal saying, Empires. I'm okay. saying Bernal Empires. That's, wow, that's the one I'm going for. What about you? What do you think? That is a happy choice. That is a happy choice. Happy choice. As in, a lot of people be very happy about that. Oh, <laughs> but imagine how happy the Cunninghams would be if they were able to win this. Now, as a reminder, both these teams are still going to Poland. They're playing for seeding on which European team they will play first at the Rumble in the West. There you see the rosters. They haven't changed since the last time we saw him root kill. But Static, Static, you're scaring me a little bit here. It was just one battle. I know, but he was like Bao Bao from uh, the Doge Squad, right? Oh, yeah. He had to redeem himself, and if there's a time for Static to redeem himself, it's definitely in this match against the Cunninghams. Yeah. We're going to have to see, though, how the play styles of these teams work out. Bernal Empires has always been an aggressive team. Cunninghams has been exceptional in the slower, methodical play, closer to what we're used to from Simp. And, of course, we should know Cunningham's play from every season because every single season they've, they've been here and they've been, uh, they were more aggressive at the beginning. Yeah. I think, Josh, yeah, you remember them being slightly more aggressive, a little bit looser. But as time went on, they've kind of tightened up. They've become more methodical. But with the players that they've gotten on this roster, I feel like they can be more flexible. They're more able to be aggressive, more able to take risks because their players are able to mitigate the RNG a little bit. They're able to downplay it. Because they know that, yes, I can, I can handle the situation. I know the best time when I can fire and depend on the RNG, or, or I just am a little bit more solid with these other players. I feel like Militant eighty three and Dodoma are doing excellently along with their other already excellent members. One of the comments that A Martin made last season caused a ripple effect with some of the opinions that people had about the Cunninghams. Mm -hmm. One of them being from uh, Bag of Kittens, the leader of. Refuse to die. What A. Martin said is that they'll win one, draw four. And that was the defensive mentality of a lot of these teams. And that's why we would see a lot of these draws when a team that had won the first battle or second battle did not need to aggress at all. They could wait for the enemy to come to them because they played a defensive strategy. They had the advantage almost every single time. Now, this worked well in a couple of the matches the Cunninghams had. And they were doing the same thing against Fnatic when they were up 2-0. to zero, But Fnatic was able to break their turtle-type play, their wall of defense. And if Bernal Empires engages in the same type of setting, being down one, Cunningham's wants to play defensively, Ber uh, Ber 
Imperial Empires has to play to their strengths. And as we heard from G-Forcer in the interview, they have to play aggressive. They should play aggressive every opportunity they have. They should play aggressive at the beginning of this map. They should play aggressive to catch the Cunninghams off guard because that's what teams have been doing in the past as well. If you can play to that strength, to play to your strengths, and to dictate what's happening on the battlefield, as I mentioned before, within the first minute, as Simple Tankers has done on Prohorovka over and over and over again, that's how you make a difference at the beginning of the series. Yeah, and I think that's the team Bernal Empires is. They're the kind of team that's going to do that. Cunninghams are going to open up probably slightly differently, slightly more conservative and more traditional, maybe is the word. They, they're probably going to stick with what works because there's a lot of strategies out there, a lot of openers that are hard to counter. You can't just open up with a blitz in the right spot and always win. But Prohorovka is the map where maybe you could. Right up and over the middle, if the Cunninghams are going to go west, that could be a nice position where Bernal Empires can pick up the first win and start this off in their advantage. We're going to find out, folks, what strategy both these teams will, will bring in the finals in battle number one on Prohorovka. Rukil, what do we have for tanks? For tanks, we're looking at a T-32, T-69, two 1390s, a RU-251 and two T-1 Cunninghams. That's Cunninghams. They are the blue team in the south. Bernal Empires, the red team in the north, will have a Pershing T-69, 1390, and two RU-251s. This is the same lineup, I believe, that we saw last time from Bernal Empires. And those RU-251s are just so dangerous. Let's go ahead and follow Zone Delta, the star from the last series. Let's see Scouts, and the Cunninghams have not gone toward the center at all. They're hovering to the south, while two of their tanks are going up to the hill. Wow, oh, we've actually got three on the hill. Commander J, Dodoma, and Germ. All three heading on up. And the 251 does actually move rather well uphill. He got a bad jump, I guess, going east, but caught up to Commander J and Dodoma very quickly. Zone Delta fires. Can't tell if... Oh, nothing could be scouted. That has to be blind fire. Mm. Check in with Static in the 1390. Ready to redeem himself. Ooh, gives a little bit of air. Yeah? Just a little bit. A little bit of that breeze. G-Forcer. Got to test out the suspension. Make sure it's good to go. <laughs> That's right. There was a a net that was used at a theater. They're like, oh, it can handle uh, 2,000 pounds per square foot. Okay. That's a lot of suspension. That's, oh, that was your point. I thought you were going to go with something I was, else. No, no, I was trying to hold you in suspense. You did. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I realized that as you said it, and I was like, no. Can't believe you. No, you can't pull stuff like that on me, Josh. It's crazy. It's okay. Okay. It's all right. These guys we'll get through this together. I'm, I'm having trouble right now, Josh, after that one. I don't know if I can hold it together after puns of that magnitude. <laughs> well, Serenity 17, Oops. still blind firing here way, way up to the north. That was yeah. towards a Martin's potential position. It was so close. It went right over his tank. You could hear it just whizz, mm. just whiz right over. And A. Martin and his crew, of course, uh, making a mess in their tank. Get yep. a mop and bucket. <sighs> That's what they're going to need. Bad day. All right. Check in with you in the 13 hanging back in the bush past the road. And Zone Delta and then RU-251 doing the same just further south. What are the cutting hands up to? None of them across railroad tracks, I believe. No, A. Martin was looking to, spotting around in the north in his T1, uh, making little active runs here and there. There was some fire that came towards him, but uh, uh, no results as of yet. Trireme in the south in his T1 was scouting around. Uh, of course, no one from Bernal and Paris has really gotten close enough to threaten that position, so not really a whole lot out of there. Now, there is a little bit happening in the middle, which is we have comps in his T69 sitting over there. And we also have Militant, 83, in a T-32. Uh, an absolutely necessary tank to have on Pearl Rovka if you're going to be playing at all a slow game because you need him for the hold down. Uh, and I don't think that anyone from Bernal Empires is really going to stand up to that. You've got a Pershing, but you've got a T-69 as well. 
Militant's in a good place, and G-Forcer is now taking 260 damage. The winner of this series will face Virtus Pro. The loser will face School Bus in the first matchup for the Rumble in the West happening in Poland October 25th. $50,000 will be the prize pool. $5,000 is already guaranteed for both these teams at least because that's what fourth place will be taking home. Sweet trip to Poland, too. Yeah, that's right. Poland is a very nice country. Mm -hmm. RU-251 of Zone Delta 94 pushing past the flag to the south, and now they're going towards the railroad tracks to start the engagement or at least get some contain next to the Cunninghams. Oh, and that's Zone Delta up and over. Oh, Whoa, buddy. Fires. One shot misses. Fires into the Doma, but... The <laughs> That was, uh, T1, a little, yeah, it was a little crazy. The T1 Cunningham did a little bit of damage on the side. You know what I think happened? He was holding down the W key, and this happens to me a lot on my home computer. I'll accidentally hit R a few times. Mm -hmm. And then you're stuck going forward, and when you take your finger off W, you're still going forward. That's why I changed R to reload and C to cruise control. C is cruise control? For me, I changed my, my keys. That's, a, that's pretty interesting. Oh, we get to see the up and over, and then back. And that is regret right there. I'm actually surprised he didn't take more damage. It took a surprisingly small amount. And Comps getting unloaded upon by Zone Delta and Static, but Zone Delta's in trouble. Comps, could he fall first? No, Zone Delta is dead. And then falls Comps from Serenity. Static, however, unloading into Milton 83 in the T32. That is a crazy push they just pulled off. T69's in there, and now we've got a late germ and Dodoma into this fight. And. Uh, they might be able to take on Serenity pretty well. Ooh. Serenity's facing the wrong way. Nice shot from Milton 83 and then from Commander J, and they take down Static. That's two of the Tier 8s down for Bernal Empires. And there goes a third one. And there goes a T1. Serenity okay. 17 falls. There goes Urtai. Rills down as well. Azrael 90. They tore and that Forcer. They just tore that apart. Cunningham's went up and over. I'd even say that push was a little sloppy. It was not simultaneous in any way. Yeah. You had tanks late to the fight, and still the Cunninghams came out ahead in this situation. Germ, Dodoma, and Commander J all picking up a kill. And G-Forcer and Azrael way out of position. They were just too far from the fight, could not guarantee the damage that they needed to shut down that push from the Cunninghams. They're too spread the out. Yeah. And when you have tanks way in the backfield, in an east versus west position on Prohorovka, if your enemy can spot that a couple of your tanks are not even past the road, they'll push in, and they'll be swift about it as well. Commander J getting behind Azrael 90. Same with the Doma, right there next to him. And Azrael goes down. G-Forcer, last one, up against Commander J. One more shot and he will fall. And who's gonna get it? Ooh, Dodoma gets it. Two kills for Commander J, two kills for Dodoma kill for German, two kills for comps. Nice play. Cunningham surprising us. I didn't realize that defensive play would work quite so well with what they did, I think, so excellently, and, uh, and the thoughts are kind of coming to me as we had Cunningham's in a defensive position. Burnell Empires does what they always do, and they push. That's what they do. They're an aggressive team. They're predictable in that respect. They will push eventually, if it if it's at the last minute, they're going to do it. And it's going to be a crazy, aggressive push. They're going to go for a victory condition. In this situation, they went up, moved up to the train tracks, which is what you do right before you begin the engagement, and they started trying to skirmish with their opponent. Now, what Cunningham's did in this situation is they found that one weak point. There's one weak point when you're getting into a position or when you're transitioning from one, uh, from one point of cover to another, and that is... One and they and they need to exploit that. So you saw the Cunninghams exploiting a position from Bernal Empires mm -hmm. at the exact right moment, and you saw how it paid off. Now they even did it sloppily, I'd say. They had late 1390 RU 251 right behind the T69 D32, who were there at least 30 seconds before them. And they were catching Bernal Empires when they were in a retreat stance. Mm -hmm. Because Zone Delta went, uh-oh, and he started moving back. And so this readjustment was happening from Bernal Empires, and that's when Cunningham said, <laughs> we can just push across railroad tracks. You're not prepared for this. And they did so. Yeah. They did so. Well done by the Cunninghams, but this was a very small window of opportunity they were able to exploit. And hopefully Bernal Empires will not open that window again because that was not, not a fun time. That was not a tasty burger. No. Not a tasty burger. Ants will be battle number two. So. We'll have more of a city map. 
And with that, we'll have the Cunninghams playing... Um, what side will they be playing? It looks like... They will have the North. Nice defensive position up there on the Northwest. Cunninghams can take that, hold it, and Bernal Empires will be forced to make some interesting decisions. If I think back to regular season, mm, I, I feel like Bernal Empires is okay mm -hmm. at Ensk, but not probably... I, I feel like maybe Cunningham's is probably going to perform a little bit better. They seem to have a very good understanding. Uh, just look at their previous match today when they were able to push up the one line and, oh, yeah. and expertly <laughs> take down Simp. A. Martin taking down... Well, helping to take down one of the Tier 8 5100s by cruising through... The cover of those of those houses. Yeah. We'll find out if Cunningham's can do it again on Ansk. If Bernal Empires will play the aggression in their favor. Battle number two is about to begin. Rook kill, what do we have for tanks? For tanks, you're gonna like this. Three fifty one hundreds, two IS threes, two T one Cunninghams. That is the Cunninghams. They're the blue team in the north. That's not the surprising one. Bernal Empires is they've got two fifty one hundreds, two IS threes, and a thirteen ninety. We don't get to see a lot of thirteen nineties on Ansk no, we don't. anymore. It just doesn't happen. We'd see object four one six. We would see sometimes a Waffentrager. Yeah. But it's been a while for me to see a 1390. And what will it do? That is the big question. Where is it going? What's he trying to accomplish? Eastern play coming out of Bernal Empires. Ah, and an early scout run. That's what it was. Static. As you see him looping back now towards the team on the minimap there. That's what he was heading for. He was looking for... Is Cunningham's going east? And with it opening scout run, you have a 1390, you have tanks that don't have perfect crew skills, and you verify what your opponent is doing. It's a good opening scout run. I really like that one in Ensk, and it's rarely utilized. Probably because of max crew skills probably changing the effectiveness of that opening run. In this case, though, perfectly effective. Infernal Empires is safe. Static and Serenity 17 leading the charge in the most northeastern section of the map up the zero line. And Rill and Urtai more towards the center of the map, uh, up the eight line actually. Interesting split, by the way. That's uh, that's 5100s north, right? Yes. Oh, yes, right. both the 5100s are north. Uh, wow. 1390 Static is the one furthest north. Take a look at this. We've got three 5100s heading south right now behind Tri-Ring. On the one line. Yeah, from the cutting apps. I, feel, I think they might have done this once before in regular season uh, last time. Or it, maybe I'm misremembering and it was another team, but this uh, they sent a T1 first, followed it up with three 5100s who just wreck any tank they find. Instant, almost instantly. But in this situation, are we looking at a potential cap fast? Uh, I don't think cap fast, but at least initial cap pressure. That can create a better flank for the Cunninghams to punish. Uh, what, what about this? Commander J, that's that's looking like a screen to me. Moving out into the open, takes down zone Delta. Wow. T1's getting on cap to Doma and A. Martin. Right there, we've got a Martin shielded perfectly behind the Doma. Trireme is moving in. We've got a fast cap working. We've got an IS-3 in the north. Militant is moving down. Commander J taking quite a bit of damage to begin this engagement, but he's going to keep tanks at bay. He's going to keep them at a distance. And with this, we have 20 seconds left on the cap, and it's looking like Cunningham's are going to be able to dominate it. Oh, Militant 83, you need to push out there and share more of that HP. Don't be so cautious here. Uh, Serenity 17 now turning the corner, and he's going to be in some trouble in a couple seconds. Uh, but looking at the rest of the fire coming from Bernal Empires from further away, you have Azrael 90, slow on health. Serenity 17 able to, well, he bounces a shot off Militant. Rill takes down Comps, Comps takes down Urtai. Azrael 90, very close to falling. Three, two, one, and. Oh, a T1, Trireme is down. Gets that it. resets it at the last possible moment. Serenity 17 pushed in just in time. Beautiful shot. By the 17 way. seconds, Serenity. I'm not sure if he has any shells left. He does. Takes down Commander J, but he's going to get body blocked by Germ as he tries to push up. Can't get it. Built in 83 gets the kill. And he needs to move forward. We have Rill to the north, but two, one, last second. Oh, and another. Static. Static gets the kill. Where did he come from? He came in the 1390. Swung all the way around, came in and got the shot. Beautiful play. That could bring this one back for Bernal Empires. 
Militant 83 and Germ. Is Militant perhaps even ammo racked? He looked like he had an incredibly long reload. Uh, Maybe he just missed a shell and I missed it. Azrael 90 around the corner is in serious trouble against Germ. One shot and Azrael could fall. He needs to land it before he dies. And he does. And he turns. Can he get the shot? No, Germ. Wow, that was an explosion. Takes him out. Militant 83. Last tank alive. Reverse angled a little bit. Real. Except for Germ. He's in a good position. There's Germ. It's a standoff. And it's uh, in the advantage of Cunningham's. Static can't take a hit. He's got move. Oh, Germ misses a shot against Rill. No. Oh, and he falls. It's up to Militant. Okay, now we've got a game where Militant has to pick a direction. Static, don't, oh, don't wait, go. Wait. No. no, there's one. There's one. That was a huge mistake. Static. Militant, I, I mean, maybe there's enough damage, but Come on, if Militant. Militant. Hold oh, the no. line. No, he might be able to get a shot in time. And he gets it. Militant from the Cunninghams, holds it with 215 HP left on his tank. Nice job by the IS-3, best tank in space. I, it's static, man. Driving out in the open is not the right choice. I think that's something they need to rein in if they're going to be able to take on the Cunninghams. They need to rein in that aggression from static at times. Sometimes it was appropriate. Save the cap once, but... We'll have them both move out together. I mean, he can only destroy one yeah. at one time, not... One at a time. Yeah, they they weren't coordinated. No. They they went out. There was the potential for the 5100 to get the kill. One bounce was what changed it, too. He bounced. If had that 5100 not bounced on Militant 83's IS-3, you would see right now Burnal Empire's winning, but he did. And that's what an IS-3 can do. IS-3's bounce shells. Good side armor. Nice angles. It happens. And here again is the situation. Now, to, to credit of Cunningham's, maybe, you know, Germ was caught out in a bad position. Sure. And that gave an advantage for Null Empires that they didn't necessarily, uh, that they shouldn't have really had, you know. But in this situation, 5100 is at least three seconds late. And with a reload like a 5100 has, that's one extra shell. Yeah. He missed out on one more shell he could have fired in that engagement had he moved slightly earlier at the same time as Static. But or on he, different uh, different sides. Yeah, it's, anything. And si it. Any simultaneous attack would have worked just fine, probably. Mm, tough. But Militant kept his cool, and that was important for the Cunninghams. Now, the Cunninghams is one battle away from closing this series and facing Virtus Pro in the first matchup in the Rumble in the West. And Bernal Empires will face School Bus. I don't know which situation is better for either team. I Both don't the, know. I don't, Virtus Pro don't know. Is, of, is absurdly skilled. School Bus also absurdly skilled. I mean, it's it's just scary to think about Cunningham's Burnell Empires, those two teams who have been facing up against the best in America and been having trouble mm -hmm. going up in defense of Europe. Europe is considered the second region next to Russia and as uh, as far as skill goes. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be scared if I were either Burnell Empires, yeah. Cunningham's win or lose. Yeah, it's it's Rocky Four, man. That's oh. what it is. It's Rocky Four. They're going to have to train. Yeah. They're going to need a train. montage. Really, really hard. All right, here we go, folks. Battle number three between the Cunninghams and Bernal Empires on Mines, my favorite map. Real kill, what do we have for tanks? For tanks, we're looking at an IS-6, T32, T69, 213-90s, two T1 Cunninghams. That is the Cunninghams there, the blue team in the south. In the north, Bernal Empires, the red team, will have a 5100, T32, Pershing, two RU-251s, and then two T1 Cunninghams. Interesting choice for the two RU-251s as light tanks instead of autoloader 1390. All right, 5100 from Bernal Empire's Urtai. Commander J has spotted something, and he's spooked. He's not going to head out to the west right now. Shots fired from comps as he is loaded very early, but I'm not seeing a lot of connection. Static has taken a shell in his Pershing, and this looks to be a big all-in from Bernal Empire's into the west. Waterside. I like it for Brutal Empires. They fire once into Commander J no, and Comps takes down Azrael 90. There's one T1 down for Brutal Empires. Another shot to Commander J. He is down to 633 hit points. That's not good for him right now. 1390 is heavily damaged. Cannot take a lot of risks. And this is Commander J, by the way, the guy who is usually the most mobile for gunning him. The one that is back and forth across the map all over the place. And he does not have the hit points to spare. Not right now. He can't afford another hit uh, because he would be almost useless in an engagement. He would go instantly down. 
Serenity takes down a Martin. Is RU 251. So all the eyes and ears on the west uh, pass a little bit of that water bridge are gone. However, the one medium, the T69 from Comps, is the closest to oh. the water side right now. And look at this. Urtai on the hill. T32 G Forcer on the hill. There's a huge amount of control going to Bernal Empires right now. And we've actually got what looks like a T1 fight brewing as, oh, never mind, that's not a T1 fight. This is going to be a slaughter. Zone Delta about to pick up Trireme. Easy. Easy kill right there. Now we do have Germ and Commander J moving out, but they don't have the hit points to spare. They can't do this engagement, especially because Urtai is right up above in a 5100 and such an Overwatch position that it's... There's not a whole lot Cunninghams are going to be able to do in this situation. Germ is going to move around, though. G-Forcer holding the line is T-32. Let's take a look at his position. Oh, he fires. Ineffective towards the dome on the IS-6. It's a strong tank. The armor is just really tricky. The angles are very nice, and it's uh, actually surprisingly potent. Another shot from the T-32 into the bushes. Does not land. This eastern positioning from the T1s, from the Cunninghams, uh, well, no, can't be the T1s, are both destroyed. It's the light tanks on the east. Yep, that is Germ and Commander J. They've split up a little bit to get a little bit of uh, crossfire along with Vision. And they, there's nothing really out there. There's Zone Delta off in the distance. You know, kind of overwatching this whole area. He's got a great view from his raised up position. But in the meantime, there is other work being done. Serenity is moving up as exposed right now and might need to think about backing down. But cover fire from G-Forcer is excellent. You've, you're keeping that T-69, that T-32 down while well, you can begin working the west. But there's a split. Burnal Empires is spread all across the map. Shot fired. This is it another engagement? There's a couple misses. G Forcer fires again. And they're firing towards Serenity and Static. Six minutes and ten seconds. There's plenty of time for Bernal Empires to attack. But the Cunninghams are going they don't they don't have to counter aggress. They don't have to answer it with aggression. In oh, it. surprise, surprise. Uh, there's some aggression. Urtai right into Commander J. One more shell and he will have it, but this is a 2v1. These 1390s are going to be able to make that damage happen. Oh, Commander J falls, but Germ comes oh. in. One more shot, and Urtai will fall, and he goes down. But here comes Zone Delta 94 chasing down Germ. Germ has one shot. He makes it count, but he's about to die. Yeah. That Urtai went very aggressively. I, I guess that's worth it. Two for one, 1390s down in exchange for 5100. Now there are three tier eights left, and you've got these RU 251s who are sitting pretty. Militant A3 and comps are moving out. And uh, that's, I guess, a final stand right here, trying to blitz their opponent, but uh, it's not a huge advantage here. They're still not ha they still don't have any kind of an overmatch. Dodoma is way out of position in this engagement. Zone oh. Delta 94 around the corner. And Militant. Fires. It's a Militant, takes oh. him down. He was not in a good position at all. That attempted blitz fell completely on its face. And uh, Bernal Empires looks like they're going to drop the final battle on this one. Zone Delta fires into Dodoma. He's the second to last tank to be alive here as Comps is the last remaining tank for the Cunninghams. And he's out in the open just trying to get kills. And there he goes. Cunninghams are able to 3-0 Bernal Empires. No. Bernal Empires hmm? just won that. What am I? Oh, gosh. Am I it's 2-1 now. <laughs> I just potatoed. I'm sorry. It's all right. I'm bad. It's okay. I'm so bad. Why did I think that? I don't know. I wore. I, <laughs> I don't know. I have. <laughs> I, I, a thousand different, a thousand different possible scenarios ran through my head in that span of time, and it all came out with the same answer: real kill. You're human. Oh yeah. So Sometimes mistakes happen. Mistakes. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. Um, it's okay. Uh, the engagement against Commander J on the mm -hmm. water side, where Serenity Seventeen and his. Battle buddy were able to damage him to the point that he was at half health is what shut down that blitz because they knew which tank to focus 
when they were trying to take down Earth Tire, Tire's like, oh no, I'm going to die, but so are you, Commander J. Mm -hmm. Then there's two for one special. Yeah, it was pretty easy. I like that push from Urtai. That was a thing I did like to see. 5100 yeah. just going at it. Uh, maybe you have the RU 251 a little bit closer to the engagement with the start, so maybe you can try and draw fire in a split or, or kind of block for each other. But, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it works out pretty well. RU 251 is able to win it. You have mobility to finish everything up, and you've still got an overmatch, a two-for-one trade. It doesn't really matter which tank, as long as you're able to just get a good trade, advantageous trade. Uh, the hit points are in your favor. And as... I mean, it would be nice to have a 5100, but you don't need it. I don't know why they played so... Well, I was concerned they were going to play defensively hmm. with the 5100 by being up there in case... Well, the reason I say that is that it is a possible tactic if your enemy, if your opponent, is going to push very quickly in the center. The 5100 yeah. can hang back, it can snipe through the bushes, but that was not the case, so Urtai found himself... And a different type of engagement, which set uh, set a chain reaction that led to their victory. However, Bernal Empire still needs two more wins to close out the series as we jump into battle number four, taking place on Himmelsdorf. Rukil, what do we have for tanks? All right, looks like we've got three fifty one hundreds, two IS threes, two T one Cunninghams for the Cunninghams. Blue team in the north. In the south, Bernal Empires will have two fifty one hundreds, three IS threes, and two T one Cunninghams. Uh, didn't they bring? A 110 last time to this map. I don't remember them bringing 110, but I have seen those IS6s used on mines today. No, no, wasn't wasn't it? No. Shot fired. Yeah, it was Burnal Empires. It was last time we were watching the 110 looking the wrong direction, right? That was the IS3. No, it was the 110. Oh, Zone Delta 94 was in the yeah, 110. Okay. It was in the 110 last time. Okay. Oh, careful zone. Well, they have him in a T1 today, so maybe <laughs> maybe he can spot better. Maybe our comment more, made a difference. More eyesight. If you watch the VOD, uh, you'll see Zone Delta do something absolutely funny. And then he goes, hmm, I wonder what that funny thing is. We should probably take him out of a 110. Oh, no, 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 no. You're no. in a T1 now. Yeah. Look at look at the, again, aggression from Bernal Empires up yeah. towards Cunninghams, who can play defensive this battle and next battle for the win. A lot of map, map, a lot of map picking. Mm -hmm. A lot of map pingings <laughs> are going on right now, not oh. Mac pickings. <laughs> Funny. Mac attack, map picks. Map pingings happening on the side of Bernal Empires. So you're hearing just a lot of little deep, deep. Beep, 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 beep. Yep. Yep. We won't see it as the observers, but they're indicating to their team where they should move. And right now, it's probably up Tank Alley, where one of the T1s, it's got to be Zone Delta. Zone Delta 94 and Serenity 17 are moving up. And uh, they're doing pretty much what was normal, I guess, on Himmelsdorf for a long time, which was assume the northern team, if they have the advantage, are going to play defensively. Mm -hmm. Northwest camp, right? What, what other option do you want? I mean, there's it's a really solid strategy. Uh, great value out of it. Not too risky or anything. Easy thing to ex execute. Yes. Your opponent then just begins assuming that's your strategy and decides, let's skip a few steps in the early stages and go straight at him. Now, Bernal Empires is in an interesting position, which you've got two tier eights all the way to the south. And then you've got three of them getting very close. There's such an overmatch possibility here if the Cunninghams knew that only three of the heavies are in Delta and Echo while the other heavy tanks are to the south. Well, the next tank that will be joining him is Azrael 90, so it's four. Oh, surprise. Look at this. A. Martin has found zone Delta. A. Martin went to the hill. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, A. Martin went to the hill. And... Missed Zone Delta, who moved up the 8 line in his T1. We were seeing his position earlier, showing mm -hmm. us that. He went around, A. Martin was returning to base, and found Zone Delta, then fired on him. Now he's trying to figure out what's Bernal Empire's up to. They've got to be out and around here somewhere. Or maybe it looks like he might go for, instead, uh, counter cap pressure for Bernal Empire's and go towards their cap. Real is on the way back in his 5100. But... 
we've got a very strange situation where we've got backfield tanks. Tanks behind others' lines, blurring of that with the T1s. And a Martin may be able to do quite a bit of work if if he can get into the right position, create a good distraction, especially if he can get to cap right now, instead of going for that defense, as I do see people stacking up to begin that assault. Royal Empire is just preparing themselves for a do-or-die mission. A do-or-die do engagement. And, and there's here they go. Spot. Shot by Dodoma, gets the kill. And a bounce from comps to begin this engagement. They're paying about 500, 600 damage to start this before they're able to track comps and begin focusing down. Azrael is nearly dead. Comps has to go for the killing shot. He gets it. Giant fiery explosion for the IS-3. Serenity 17 is the next target. Smart target adaption. And that is a two for one right there. Commander J able to get that. And G-Forcer tries to follow it up. But Germ to the south is taking damage against Rill, not coming out on top yet in that engagement, Militant 83, not taking damage against Static, and Commander J is on the reload against G-Forcer as well as Dodoma. IS-3 is the only thing able to deal damage at this point in the uh, fight. Oh, Commander J is in a tough place. Super low on health right now after that engagement. But Militant 83 and Static fighting back and forth here while Cunningham's put one of their tanks on the flag cap. G-Force are now pushing out. Uh, now Rill gets into Germ, finishes him off. And Static is going to begin pushing on in. And he takes down Commander J. Militant, 83, surrounded by three tanks. But surprise, Dodoma from the north could bring this one back as he is finishing. And there's two kills. G-Force and Static go down simultaneously. Now only Rill remains. Rill, the last tank alive. That's all that needed to happen. That 150-100 reload, Dodoma was in the perfect position. And Vernal Empires did not respect that 5100 Three, enough. Three, two, one. That's it. The Cunninghams close out the series. They will be the number one seed of the North America for the Rumble in the West. They will be facing Virtus Pro for the first battle on October 25th at the Pazna Game Arena in Pazna, Poland. It's for a prize pool of $50,000, but both teams already guaranteed at least $5,000. Fourth place is $5,000. Well done by the Cunninghams. Rukil, um, you know, Bernal Empires started to go for the aggression, but when they went for the northern section, they, sort of, uh, a beating. So they, they took a little bit of a beating. Yeah, and then the south never re recovered because of that. Yeah, I, I feel like they just didn't get what they needed out of that engagement. They didn't get the connections they needed, the focus fire. Um, they got a few lucky bounces here and there, which may have been able to bring it back, but overall, Bernal Empires made an engagement and did not have the advantages to to go with it they couldn't get the t1 on cap to create some alternate pressure at the right time they needed to one one thing i, I like to think about i should explain what the point i was going to make is uh if you're going to get a t1 on cap throwing it on cap right before an engagement is nice but what is nicer is to start an engagement and then throw a t1 on cap so your opponent is forced uh to deal with your tier 8 engagement and then go and focus on a t1 and then get back to the tier 8 engagement interrupting all of that and kind of making them have to focus on multiple things at the same time. They were able to deal with the only real threat yeah. and continue defending against the tier 8s and not have to deal with a T1 capping their base. Cunningham's did an excellent job defending on Himmelsdorf. Let's recap the day mm. through the matches today. Simp fell to the Cunningham's. That was 3-1, to one, if you can believe it. And with one draw in there with on one draw. steps. Yep. And Tyne out versus Bernal Empires. Bernal Empires won 3-1 to one with a draw happening on steps as well. And in the Spence. end, Bernal Empires versus Cunningham's Cunningham's took the series three to one. All three to ones tonight. But no draw. No draw. Series. No draw. The one win for Bernal Empires happened on Mines. Now, it was a pleasure for us to bring you the qualifiers for North America. You definitely want to stay tuned October 25th at the Pazna Game Arena in Pazna. I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Poznan? Poznan? I think it's Poznan. Poznan? Yeah. Poznan? I, I, I also don't know a proper pronunciation. Yeah, we'll, have to, ask, we'll have to ask uh, Lemming Train. <laughs> how, to, how to pronounce it properly. Poznan. Poznan Game Arena and Poznan Pole on October 25th for a $50,000 prize pool for the Rumble in the West. Now, you can get more information on the tournament's website at uh, worldoftanks.com. And there you can get more information about upcoming tournaments as well that you can sign up in the skirmishes. We've had the Bronze League and the Silver League, and we commentate the Gold League. The Gold League will continue after 
the Rumble in the West with Season 5. Many teams will be returning, and a couple new faces will be joining us. One of those new faces is a team that made it through the uh, up-and-down matches. Um, I can't remember their name right now for some reason. Oh, <laughs> I Love Lamp. I Love Lamp will be yes. joining us. I Love Lamp with a T1 named Brick <laughs> riding around the battlefield yep. like a crazy person. It was great. Ah, beautiful. Uh, make sure to follow us as well on Twitter at WGLNA, Facebook.com slash WGLNA, and use that hashtag when you commu communicate to us during our broadcast so we can bring those tweets up. But also so you can get more information of when Season 5 will start and stay up to date on everything happening for the Rumble in the West. Any closing thoughts, Randall? Uh, beautiful matches tonight. Really just absolutely satisfactory uh, for me. I, this is uh, probably some of the best series altogether. Yeah. that I've seen in a long time, just strung together. The Sim versus Cunningham's absolutely blows my mind. Timed out Bernal Empires, very impressed with play from both teams. And then the final one, Cunningham versus Bernal Empires. Uh, I was, uh, Cunningham's looked great. Looked absolutely great. They did. And they uh, did. your thoughts on that? I loved seeing the new light tanks being used. They oh, look yeah. fantastic, and they add, they add a lot of fun to a game that, when you get so set in the meta and you have something that changes it, Everybody gets excited, and we get excited seeing what type of plays and what type of strengths and even weaknesses these tanks have. It, it adds new life into the game and into the competition. With that being said, we thank you for watching. Make sure to hit that follow button as well on our, uh, on our Twitch page, and uh, we'll see you guys very, very soon. Rumble in the West again, October 25th. Until then, good night and good game.